I'm Sean Berry. I'm a Green Assembly member here in this building, and I'm co-leader of the Green Party since September. And I want to say welcome to City Hall, to what I think is the biggest delegation of housing experts who have ever come here. Thank you for coming. You are the experts. You don't just care about how London develops. You are the ones with the bright ideas of how to do it. You live in our homes, you know our estates, and you know how to improve them and care about your community. The risk of being broken up when demolition is planned. You are the experts who should be making the plans for how to build more council homes in London, and the mayor and your councils should be listening. And the thing is, you're objectively right when you oppose plans that think the best way to get new council homes in London is to demolish the ones we have. That approach doesn't work, and the evidence shows it. In my work here, I've looked at and analysed planning commissions for sites with existing social housing. And over the last 15 years, policing schemes have led to the net loss of more than 4,000 council homes. Yay! And schemes not yet completed that have planning commission will lead to the net loss of getting on for 8,000 more. Demolition-based plans also lead to long periods with council homes out of action. I've looked at this in detail for Camden, where I'm a councillor. Uh, and I've added up the number of homes and the number of years that they would be missing while they are knocked down and rebuilt. Eventually in Camden, the council schemes lead to a small net gain. But while we wait for that, while the homes are decanted, while they're filled with property guardians, not council tenants, while they wait to be knocked down, while the new homes are built, while the delays happen, the total loss in Camden will be 800 years worth of households displaced, living in other council homes while we wait for these schemes to be finished, not letting other people get access to those homes. And that's not to mention the social impact of breaking up communities, the health impact of insecurity, uncertainty and stress to those affected, and then the environmental impact of wasting all that concrete, metal, brick, wood, all of the materials that go to waste when you demolish instead of refurbishing and repairing. These impacts, they were set out by the London Assembly before I came here. My predecessor, Darren Johnson, was chair of the Housing Committee when they published a report, Knock It Down or Do It Up, which set out these problems in 2015 and said demolition should only go ahead after an independent ballot of residents. The committee was right then and the assembly was right in November last year when we passed unanimously a motion I proposed to back ballots for residents on estates so that no demolition can happen without permission. Even the Conservatives voted for that motion because they had seen the evidence too. The pressure from the Assembly was part of a successful campaign with thousands of residents writing to the Mayor too, brilliant campaigning from Demolition Watch, Unite, many other groups around London to get the Mayor to stick to his manifesto promises. Galinda's right, his draft regeneration guidance policy in December last year was terrible. But over the next year, we somewhat changed his mind. And in February, the new revised guidance came out with a policy to require ballots when demolition is planned in future. This is a big victory to make the mayor listen to us. But there were catches. It's only for schemes asking for GLA funding that he has refused to use his planning powers to ask for ballots too. It excludes small developments. There's a lower limit of 150 homes proposed for building. I think that will mean a suspicious number of schemes coming forwards from landlords with 149 homes. <laughs> and not everyone who needs one will get to vote. Private renters from leaseholders, anyone not named on leases and tenancies, will be left out of the decision when it should be every resident having a say. And I was furious. Just um, incensed. Absolutely. Um, just couldn't have been angrier when I found out what the mayor had been doing during that long period between the draft guidance, the end of the consultation, and February when he announced the new policy. This is a major reason for today's protest. It's a reason for the vigil that's going to happen. In those 11 months, 34 schemes, many of them the most controversial, were sort of quietly given funding so they could slip under the wire of the new policy coming into force. 16 of them were signed off in the last two months. 
before the announcement of the policy when the mayor must have known what his new policy was going to be. It's incredibly fishy. And then when the final detailed policy terms were announced this summer, they also let any scheme that already has planning permission through the net as well, whether or not funding agreements were signed. So, so planning is relevant when it suits the mayor and those councils that he's made with when they need a favour, that's fine, but not for the wider policy. So we're here today to object to these betrayals of residents by the mayor. Despite the improved policy for the future, thousands and thousands of homes will be lost thanks to this slipperiness. He has put in too many loopholes, he's done too many favours, and we object, Mr Mayor, and you must meet the residents that you've let down. Yeah. 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 We're also here to stand up for the rights of residents and the principle of residents having a final say in how their homes are developed and managed. Council homes need to be brought closer to the people with proper accountability, real yes. transparency. Yes. We must put residents in control. Development plans to add new homes to a state should only ever come from residents who yes. need a binding ballot for every plan. Yes. And rather than treat estates in general as brownfield sites, public land needs to be set aside for new homes that the community itself wants to build, for council homes and community-led plans, like the Holloway prison site, like St Anne's Hospital, uh, where you've got a people's plan for Holloway, you've got a community land trust making plans for St Anne's Hospital. These are what is needed in London, not demolition of the estates we already have. Yeah. We've made some progress from the mayor, but he needs to stop finding loopholes for his friends among our social landlords. He needs to enforce his ballot policy for Labour councils, not just Conservative ones. And we need to keep up our pressure and make the same demands on our councils. Several parties who control councils now went to the ballots in May this year, with, went, to the, went to the votes in May this year for the council with ballots in their manifestos. Yeah. We need to hold those parties to account, not let them wriggle out of them with exceptions and excuses. And councils that don't have voluntary, voluntary ballot promises or policies need to feel the weight of our campaigning too. Together, we can amplify each other's campaigns. We can make our collective voice louder. We can shame those who are letting residents down and bulldozing our de democracy locally. Working together across London and across parties, we have made progress, and we can win if we keep up the pressure on the mayor, on the councils, and say no demolition without permission. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.